Amen. Our Father, we thank you for our leadership development meeting tonight. We pray, Lord, that you lift up everyone higher than where we have been in Jesus' name. Grant us more grace, more strength, more understanding, and more of the power of the Spirit in every life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. Consider, uh, welcome everyone to our leadership uh, development uh, session tonight. In Jesus' name. Uh, we, we have uh, read uh, much of uh, Leviticus chapter 13, 14, and 15. And we have seen the laws concerning leprosy and the lepers in the Old Testament. But we need to remember that we are New Testament ministers. In the case of those priests in the Old Testament, they were to investigate, interrogate, examine them. And then those they found to be lepers, they couldn't heal them. They couldn't uh, touch them. They shouldn't even touch them. All they could do is incarcerate them and put them away so that the contagion of the disease will not come upon the rest of the people. Coming to the New Testament, uh, we're given a higher ministry, more excellent ministry. We're not just to investigate and interrogate and incarcerate and cast them out of the congregation were to heal them, were to cleanse them. So tonight, we're looking at the message, the more excellent ministry of the New Testament priesthood. We look at Hebrews chapter 8, and we're looking at verse 6. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, but now, as he Christ obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. And that is what he has handed over to us. He has not handed over to us Leviticus chapter 14, 15, 13, he handed over to us the more excellent ministry. What he did was the lepers, when he was here, that is what he has handed over to us. We're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31, but covet earnestly the best gifts. What gifts do we need to operate like Christ, to live like Christ, to minister like Christ, to pray like Christ, and to help people, sinners to help them, lepers to help them, the people that have issue of blood that in the Old Testament would have made them unclean, you don't go near them. What gifts do we need so that we'll be able to minister to those people having the issues that make them unclean? Christ has shown us the way and now he says covet earnestly the best gifts and yet I show you a more excellent way more excellent than Old Testament priesthood method and priesthood uh, procedures it tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 6 who also has made us made us ministers of the New Testament not ministers of the Old Testament anytime we we'll see uh, somebody is not uh, this is not that he has a leprosy, maybe a spiritual leprosy, seen. The first thing we think about, investigate them, interrogate them, incarcerate them, cast them out because they are not fit. Make them fit. Cleanse them, counsel them, help them, lift them up and exercise the more excellent ministry on their behalf who also has made us able ministers of the new testament not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit giveth life look at verse 11 there in verse 11 
for if that which is done away was glorious, that he is in the Old Testament, Old Covenant, everything now is done away, the ceremonial law, touch not and taste not, and they do not have anything to do with them, separate them, cast them out, let them say outside the camp, all that now has been done away, given away, much more that which remaineth is glorious. What remaineth now is the ministry of Christ, the ministry of the Spirit to the leper, to the lepros, to the uh, people having issues, and even to the sinners, and to the sick, and to the demon. Paul says, he tells us in verse 18, in verse 18, but we all with open face beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. We look at Christ, we look at his ministry, and we look at his power, his anointing, and we look at him and gaze on him and study him and listen to him and see what he wants us to be and to do in this dispensation. And we're changed. We're changed from the Old Testament concept, the Old Testament procedure. We're changed to the same image from glory to glory that he is as you, as you begin to manifest the ministry of Christ. This level of glory, then you keep on looking at him, studying him and having greater faith. And you're changed from glory to to higher glory to higher glory the lord will lift you up to the it says even as by the spirit of the lord as we've said we're looking at the more excellent ministry of new testament priesthood three things we're looking at number one the limited ministry of old testament priests the limited ministry of the old testament priest number two the lost mediation. They were to mediate and they were to carry on that mediation between the sinners and the, and the Lord. And they were to reconcile men to God. But eventually they lost even that ministry of mediation. They lost mediation of ordained transforming priesthood. They were ordained to transform. They were ordained to show the light and the knowledge of the Lord unto the people. They lost it. Number three now is uh, the limitless mandate of the New Testament preachers. Now, we New Testament uh, preachers and the priests of the Lord, the mandate he has given us. He has not given us the Old Testament mandate. Examine them, interrogate them, stop them, cast them out. It says the New Testament mandate is to make everyone we contact, make them better, make them more useful, make them more profitable in the kingdom of God. The limitless mandate of the New Testament preachers. We are coming to number one. Number one is the limited ministry of the Old Testament priests. Already we've read, you know, that passage. Okay, let us look at Leviticus chapter 13, reading from verse 14. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, shall be torn, and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper leaves, and shall cry unclean, unclean. Then in verse 46, it says, all the days wherein the plague shall be in him, it shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone. No fellowship. He shall dwell alone. No association. He shall dwell alone. He shall be secluded and pushed to the outside of the camp. He shall dwell alone without the camp. Outside the camp shall his habitation be. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, the limitation of the Old Testament priest. Number two, the lamentation of uh, observant trusting 
persons. The East were people in the Old Testament. They observed. They looked at the early days of Moses and they looked at their time. And because the limitation was making the Old Testament priest to go down and down and down, they lamented. Number three, the leprosy on offending, transgressing people. Look at number one. Number one is the limitation of the Old Testament priest. It tells us in read Leviticus, look at Numbers chapter 5, reading from verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying in verse 2, it said, Command the children of Israel that they put out of the camp. They put out of the camp every leper and everyone that has an issue and uh, whosoever is defiled by the dead shut them out shut them up put them out look at verse 3 in verse 3 both male and female shall ye be put out without the camp shall ye put them they uh, that they defile not their camps in the midst they whereof I dwell. That is, uh, all those people are put up because leprosy was contagious and they didn't have any healing virtue. They didn't have any healing power to get them healed. And not to make the matters worse for the congregation of the children of Israel. All they could do is put them out. And then we're told in verse 4. In verse 4 it says, And the children of Israel did so without partiality and without uh, considering this or that or without having respect of persons. It was, if it was Miriam that got the leprosy, the high priest Aaron, that both of them are spoken against uh, Moses. Uh, Aaron, the high priest, did not have the power to heal him. All he, can, all he could do is appeal to Moses, and Moses was not high priest he was not priest he was the servant of the lord for the people all he could do is to appeal to moses pray for her and heal her now so that she will not be as one that is totally rejected and god said will she follow the principle before she see even though moses had prayed she will be outside the camp male or female they'll be outside the camp as the lord spake unto moses so did the children of israel that was their limitation they couldn't heal they couldn't deliver they couldn't cleanse but they could put them out in our situation today in our church What's her first thinking when somebody backslides and when somebody has gone astray? The first thing, put them out. Put, the, put them out. Shouldn't we have a better approach that, well, we've heard what has happened. Yes, we don't accommodate sin. Can we pray with them? Can we help them to be convicted? Can we help them to have a turning around? Can we help them to have a kind of consecration commitment that says, I will do that no more? And their lives then begin to shine. Let's look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the lamentation of observant, trusting persons there were people in the land that observed what was going on and, and they saw that uh, even though the priests of the old testament were not able to heal were not able to cleanse the lepers there were some uh, prophets prophets that identified themselves and distinguished themselves and they had the power that the 
um, Levites and the priests did not have. In Second Corinth, in Second Kings, chapter five, reading from verse one. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honourable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. This is a stranger, was a stranger, a foreigner to the commonwealth of Israel. And he was a leper and was a great man, a great man of valor because he was a militant, a military person and he had brought real victory to his country. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, and the Syrians had gone out by companies and at brought away a captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. In verse 3, it tells us, and she said unto her mistress, would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, not all the priests, the, the, the little girl did not have any evidence that the priests had the power to do that, but she knew about the prophet. You can distinguish yourself that instead of having the mindset, investigate, interrogate, incar incarcerate, you can have the mindset, clean them up perform the miracle link up with the lord jesus christ what would jesus have done to this leper to this backslider if he were here today he would claim he would restore and so the young girl the little girl said if uh, my master were in Samaria, he would recover him of his leprosy. And then in verse 4, in verse 4 it says, And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus, says the maid that is of the land of Israel. And eventually, a Nehemiah went to Elisha. We're told in verse 9, in verse 9 it says, So Nehemiah came with his sources and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Verse 10, verse 10 says, And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Obviously, um, uh, Elisha would have read the Old Testament, a prophet in Israel. He would have known how to examine the leprosy, how to see when the air is white, when that area is reddish. He would have seen that this is a real leprosy. He would have confirmed the man unclean. Not only that, he would have known about the sacrifices and the two birds that you know shall be sacrificed and one the blood will be sprinkled and the other one will be allowed to fly away all those details Elisha did not think about all that when you have the power to cleanse and the power to heal and the revelation coming from the Lord direct the man and his flesh shall be clean you will not need all those ceremonial things you know the story if first of all rejected but later he accepted and went into the into Jordan and he was cleansed. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, uh, we're, uh, we're looking at this. Then went he down and did himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And you will be clean from every defilement, physical or spiritual, 
cleanliness will come upon you in Jesus name now after that she now said in verse 15 look at verse 15 and he returned to the man of God and he and all his company and came and stood before him and he said behold now I know there is no God in all the earth now when we go for all these crusades the GCK what are we aiming at? Are we aiming at examining them, explaining to them how rotten they are, how sinful they are, how rejected they are, and make them understand they're miserable people and then go away with their heads down? That's not the purpose. That's not the goal. The goal is for them to see the mighty manifestation of the power of God and to declare that there is no other God that can save and heal and deliver after this sort and then surrender their lives to the Lord. Know your goal. When you go to minister, know what you are after and know the effect and the result you want to get. And it says there's no other God on in all the earth but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a little blessing of thy servant. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, but he said, as the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it but he refused freely. You have been given freely. Give the lamentation. Look at Psalm 74, reading from verse 9. In Psalm 74, verse 9, we see not our signs. There is no more any prophet with power, neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. Uh, the, the lamentation is, where are people like Elijah? Where are people like Elisha that will not just be concerned? You understand in the Old Testament with the priest, you don't need power to cast out the leper. You don't need grace to put off the leper. You don't need anointing to put off the leper. All that can be done even to examine. You don't need grace for that. You don't need anointing for that. And to confirm, according to the signs, well, look at the signs and look at the man and you compare. There, there's no grace needed for that. Love needed for that. Anointing power needed for that. But... If we're going to have the ministry of Christ on the lepers, on the people that have issues, issues, any kind of issue, and we're going to transform their lives by the strength of the Lord, that's why we need grace. That's when we need intercession. That's when we need waiting upon the Lord. And that is when we need the very nature of Christ. So they lamented the people that were observant. And the people that were trusting the Lord will see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. Neither is there among us, within us, any that knoweth how long in luke chapter 4 reading from verse 27 luke chapter 4 reading from verse 27 and many lepers were in israel in the time of elisha that's elisha the prophet and none of them was cleansed none of them in israel many lepers none of them was cleansed even though they were insiders saving except Naaman the Syrian that came from outside. Why? Well, those lepers in Israel, they knew that the priests and the prophets in Israel, apart from Elisha, Elijah, all they were concerned about is cast them out, put them out lock them up. All they were concerned about is 
what they could do without intercession, without prayer, without power, without the anointing. And so they didn't even bother to go to those uh, priests or to go to anybody that is called the leader in Israel. But Naaman, he didn't know any of those uh, Levitical uh, things. And so as he was told, if my master will see the prophet in Israel, he will be cleansed. That's what he took uh, to heart. And when we take it to heart, the Lord will heal us inside. He'll heal the people outside. When we kind of improve on our ministry, when we improve on our ministry, we're not searching for who is the backslider there? Who is uh, the erroneous person there? I'm looking for them, my ministry to have a big stick in hand, cast them out, cast them out. When we change our ministry, when we improve on our ministry, and all we want to do, if they're wrong, I want to set them right. If they're sick, I want to be an agent of healing in the hands of the Lord. Then the people will ease up, they'll come to us, will help them will have new testament ministry upon their lives in jesus name we're looking at number three here number three is the leprosy on offending transgressing people the leprosy that came upon offending transgressing people well we know the story of uh, miriam and aaron in uh, numbers chapter 12 uh, reading from verse 1 and miriam and aaron speak against moses because of the ethiopian woman uh, whom he had married for he had married an ethiopian woman when he was away in the backside of the desert in verse 2 it tells us and they said as the lord indeed spoke in only of uh, Moses as seen not spoken also by us and the Lord heard it. Aaron had a lot on his side, a lot to minister, a lot to take care of his own sons that were priests, you know, brushing them up and training them. And he left that significant ministry. And all he was thinking about now, look at Moses, look at the Mary, look at this. And Miriam, she was the leader over all those women. There were millions of them. And, and instead, of concentrating on that ministry uh, talking about uh, you know uh, Moses and you know that Aaron and Miriam they were of the same parents with Moses and they were older than uh, Moses and all they could think or talk about is look at this and look at that let's concentrate on our ministry God has accepted and anointed and approved of that, uh, you know, uh, that Moses, look at the water coming out of the rock, talk about that. And look at the bitter water that was turned sweet, uh, talk about that. And look at the serpent, brazen serpent erased up, and everyone that looked on that, they were healed, talk about that. Look at the rod, he stretched to the Red Sea, and the Red Sea parted, talk about that. And look at what he stretched out when, Je uh, when Joshua went into the battlefield anytime the hand of Moses was up they were defeating the enemies talk about that but all these small small things family issues and this and that let's forget about that and go on in a ministry well the result is God was angry with Aaron and with Miriam. And look at verse 8. In verse 8, we're told, verse 8, verse 8, with him will I speak. This is God talking mouth to mouth. Even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Whereof then were ye not afraid to speak against? my servant Moses. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. 
Leprosy did not come on Aaron, but the anger of the Lord came upon him. And then in the physical to show uh, that anger, look at verse 10. In verse 10 it says, And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. In verse 11, verse 11, And Aaron said unto Moses, Allah, as my Lord, he was the junior brother to Aaron. But now the Lord had made Moses his servant, the leader. And he said, Aaron, your senior brother, will be your prophet. You will hear the word from me. You will give it to him because he's fluent, eloquent. And then he will speak the word from you. And so Aaron now woke up. I shouldn't have uh, been, you know, talking uh, big mouth against Moses. He should have been the one that hears the word from the Lord and tells me, alas, my Lord, we beseech thee, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, upon us, wherein we have done foolishly. And it says, Sanch, wherein we have sinned. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, let her not be as one dead, out of whom the flesh is consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. In verse 13, and Moses cried unto the Lord. What a man, what a servant of God, meek and lowly, like the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will not revenge, he will not, uh, you know, say, that's good for her, that's good for you, Aaron. Now, you are the priest, and you are the one to take a leprous uh, Miriam outside the camp. None of that. And Moses was not interested in, you know, casting out people and incarcerating them and let them suffer for the evil they have done all he was concerned about is the cleansing of the people so that they will remain in the camp and then move along with us to the promised land heal her now oh god i beseech thee we're looking at Zephaniah chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 4 uh, the, her prophets are light and treacherous persons you see eventually the children of Israel uh, they went down degradation and they left their office and the all that they were doing now is what they could do without grace without prayer without anointing all they could do now was to pray the generality of the people and the prophets were light and treacherous places. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. The priests could not uh, cleanse them, improve on them, make them better. Actually, the ministry of those priests eventually degenerated to the point that they polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. We're coming to point number two. In point number two, we're looking at the lost mediation of ordained transforming priesthood. What the Lord expected of them is that they will transform the people. Their priesthood was to be a transforming agent in the hands of the Lord. Keep them up. Teach them the word of God. Transform their lives and make them uh, quite acceptable in the sight of the Lord. But they lost that mediation and they lost that ministry look at leviticus chapter 22 verse 4 in leviticus chapter 2 verse 4 what man soever 
of the seed of Aaron is a leper or has a running issue. Think about this. That these priests, the sons of Aaron, they were not supposed to have leprosy. They were supposed to look at the people having leprosy and deal with the issue. But the situation came that they themselves now, the protection and the covering was not fully on them and a son, a siege of, of Aaron as a leper or has a running issue, he shall not eat of the holy things until he be clean and also touches anything that is unclean by the dead or a man whose seed goeth from him. Then it goes on to say that those people will not be able to officiate, mediate, or do anything because the leprosy they were to investigate, interrogate, and incarcerate the people for they themselves. They had the leprosy. Now, three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the disqualifying leprosy on officials priest not officiating priest but officials priests the people that carry position on the head and they're going about i am a priest i am a priest even leprosy comes upon them and disqualifies them number two the degenerate life of obstinate princes the priests and then the kings the princes their lives became degenerate and then number three deluding lukewarmness of overtaking preachers the preachers that should stay above board they were overtaking in sin and sin is pictured by leprosy look at number one number one is the disqualifying leprosy on officials a priest look at uh, second kings chapter 5 reading from verse 20 in second kings chapter 5 verse 20 but Gehazi, the servant of elisha the man of god said behold my master has spared the man the Assyrian, and he says, in not receiving, taking at his hands that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. Verse 21. In verse 21, so Gehazi followed after Naaman. And, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, It's all well. Verse 22. And he said, All is well. My master have sent me. Is that true? Did he take any word, any permission from his master Elisha? No. Why didn't you answer now? <laughs> no. Look at this and uh, let's go on. And it says, uh, Behold, even now, there be some, uh, there be some come to me from Mount Ephraim, two young men of the sons of the prophets and give them i pray thee a talent of silver and two changes of raiment verse 23 in verse 23 and naaman said be content be satisfied take two take two talents and he he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags and with uh, two changes of raiment and laid them upon two of his servants and they bear 
them before him, before Gehazi. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, and when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house and he let the men go and they departed. Look at verse 25. And he went in and he stood before his master and Elisha said unto him Whence comest thou Gezai? And he said Oh, thy servant went no whither now. Elisha did not need psychology how to test him, interrogate him, investigate him, question him. Elisha did not need all that. You see, Elisha, as a prophet, had developed himself beyond the level of the priests of Israel, of the sons of Aaron. He had asked for the double portion of the Spirit of God on Elisha. And because of that, he knew the truth without Gehazi having to, you know, uh, be pressured and be questioned and all that. He had the Spirit, he had the gifts of the Spirit. What if we spent more time on ourselves having the Spirit of God in abundant measure so that we can be more useful to the congregations that we lead rather than all the, you know, methodical, mechanical, physical, psychological, you know, kind of uh, things that we do. Let's bury all that and develop ourselves so that we'll be more profitable to the people of God in ministry. And look at verse 26. In verse 26, but he said unto him, Went not my mine heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee. Is it a time to receive money and to receive the garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servant and maid servant? In verse 27, the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave on thee and unto thy seed forever and he went out he lost his ministry because of the leprosy that came as judgment upon him he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow we're looking at Ephesians chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 5, Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 5, for this ye you know, that no monger, no unclean person, no covetous man, like Gehazi, covetous man, who is an idolater, he worshipped money, he worshipped the things that Naaman had offered Elisha, and Elisha would not accept. He said, I got it freely, and I give it freely, and Gehazi, because of his covetousness, ran after him, and he got that thing, and the word of God says, not only that a covetous man who is not cleansed, who is not transformed, who is not changed, not only that he will lose ministry, he will lose the kingdom of God, he will lose heaven. He says he has no inheritance, any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. In verse 6, in verse 6 it says, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things, covetousness, because of these things, avarice, because of these things, running after the unlawful gain in this world, because of these things, cometh the wrath of 
God upon the children of disobedience. In verse 7, verse 7 says, Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Look at number 2. Number 2, we're looking at the degenerate life of obstinate princes. The princes that should, uh, you know, get the people looking unto God and living for God and still make the nation of Israel the most uh, uh, desirable nation on earth. These princes, uh, they became obstinate and they were degenerate in uh, Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 21. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? Then in verse 22, it says, For though thou wash thee with nitre, and they take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is much before me, says the Lord. Verse 26, in verse 26, as the thief is ashamed when he is found, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They, their kings, their princes, their priests, and their prophets. They did not uh, take the opportunity they had to be so close to God, to be so influenced by God, to be so transformed by God, and to remain at the higher heavenly level, heavenly places they should have retained. In Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 21, it says, because when the new God those early priests when they knew God, and those priests coming after them when they knew God, those prophets of the Old Testament when they knew God initially, when they knew the word of God initially, when they knew the power of God initially, those people coming out of Egypt and passing through the Red Sea, and those people that had the covenant of peace with God, they knew God originally. It said, but now they're like the Gentiles, the Gentiles too. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. They should have been, all those priests of the old covenant should have been looking at themselves that the Lord set us apart at the sons of Levi and he placed us in this uh, situation that we will connect all the people of Israel with the living God. What a great privilege they had and be thankful. No, neither was thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. In verse 22, it says in verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Verse 23, verse 23 says, and it changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed bees and creeping things. It's talking about Gentiles, but it's applicable to those Israelites. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the laws of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. These people led the natural use of the body and now they defiled themselves. They forgot the purpose of creation and the purpose of redemption, and the purpose while they were ordained into service, into the ministry. In verse 25, it says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, it says, For this cause, 
God give them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Verse 27, it says, and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the womb of the woman burnt in their lust in their passion one toward another men with men walking that which is unseemly and and receiving in themselves the that uh, recompense of their error which is me it is saying that now they receive not only leprosy now but as venal disease not only venal disease that like hiv is a lot of sicknesses now apparently incurable made naturally except by the power of god because of the way they have yielded themselves now to those lusts of the flesh. And in verse 28, verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them up, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. What were they doing? In verse 29, in verse 29, and being filled with all unrighteousness, now fornication and the wickedness and covetousness and maliciousness, full of envy and murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, bastardy. It says, but biters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boosters and inventors of evil things disobedient to parents verse 31 it says in verse 31 without understanding and the covenant breakers without natural affection implacable and merciful verse 32 who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of their death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them. Look at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the deluding lukewarmness of overtaking preachers. Overtaking, overtaking. That is, uh, they're doing the evil thing. They have abandoned the central ministry. They have abandoned their central calling. They have abandoned their central consecration. And then periphery things, unimportant things, or essential things. They're not concentrating on and they are caught and they are overtaken. Look at Galatians chapter 6 reading from verse 1 brethren, if anyone any man be overtaken in a fault. Let's remember once again when somebody is overtaken like those priests of the old covenant of the old testament and they saw any sign of leprosy and now they concentrate on that no power to cleanse but they had the passion to examine and to go into details and all that it says if any man be overtaken in a fault ye which are spiritual restore such an one restore such an one a priest of the Lord because we are the holy priesthood now and a prophet of the Lord were the ones standing in for Christ prophets of the Lord were the preachers of the gospel now were not looking at how to condemn how to you know bring them down were looking at what can we do so that they will be the men the women the boys the girls they ought to be if a man be overtaking a fault ye which are spiritual restore such and one in the spirit of meekness not pride not you know kind of saying you will know who i am i am the leader here i caught you you've done that thing you will smell pepper not in the house of god we restore them in the spirit of meekness considering thyself 
lest thou be tempted. We're coming to point number three. In point number three, we're looking at the limitless mandate of the New Testament preachers. And that's who we are. We go beyond the people of the Old Testament, of the Old Covenant. And now we want to know what's our mandate and what is the limitlessness of the mandate that we have as new Testament people. We're dividing this to three parts. Look at number one. Number one, his ministry of cleansing, not casting out lepers that's referring to christ number two our mandate of cleansing not just counseling the lepros and then number three our mastery in consecration and conformity to the lord look at number one number one we're looking at christ what did he do how did he do it when he was here on earth he confronted lepers too what did he do did he go back to the leviticus uh, you know passage as to how to examine them let's see what he did we're looking at mark chapter 1 verse 40 in mark chapter 1 verse 40 and there came a leper to him beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him if thou wilt thou canst make me clean already the man knew he was a leper we don't need to examine the one that already knows it was a leper interrogating him how did the leprosy come for how many years has he been there he came and he ran to him and said if thou wilt if thou be willing thou canst make me clean look at verse 41 verse 41 jesus moved with compassion 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 and that's what we we'll learn from christ and when we find somebody who has leprosy who has an issue who has a mental problem or who has spiritual problem or who is uh, you know uh, by his own what he brought upon himself is gotten into this now and he cannot help himself compassion compassion and and then he put forth his son and touched him and says unto him my will be thou clean look at verse 42 in verse 42 and as soon as he had spoken immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed the ministry of cleansing the leper not casting out the leper look at luke chapter 17 we're reading from verse 14 luke chapter 17 verse 14 and when he saw them he said unto them go show thyself to the priest and it came to pass that as they went they were Place. These were ten lepers that met the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, Son of David, have mercy on us. And again, compassion, compassion. And he didn't even have to touch them now. He didn't have to examine them how deep the leprosy was, which part has turned white, which part is reddish. He just told them, Go show yourselves to the priest. Why? Would he say, go and show yourself to the priest? You see the lepers in the Old Testament. Remember, Naaman was not an Israelite. The people that were Israelites and they had leprosy, they'll be examined. They'll say, this is leprosy. They will declare he is unclean. Well, if he says he's healed, he will come back and they will examine him and really show and really affirm that he is clean before they allow him to live in the midst of the congregation of the children of Israel. The point now is this, for some thousands of years, about 2,000 years, nobody in Israel has come back to the priest to say, 
were, were lepers, you examined us, and now we're clean. And there had not been a kind of following the process of affirming their cleansing. So for those 2,000 years, all that part of examining them that they were clean, they had not done. Not for the first time. These lepers, they came. And even the one leper in Matthew chapter 8 and Mark chapter 1, don't tell anyone, go and show yourself to the priest. If you tell anyone, all those people you tell, they do not have the power to admit you back into the congregation. Everybody will still think you're unclean, but show yourself to the priest and they will affirm that you are clean and then they'll accommodate you, accept you back back into the society these ten go show yourself to the priest the priest if these people go to went to them and they saw they were clean they had to now think for thousands of years cleansing has not happened who did this who made you clean? They'll have to say it's Christ. And those priests will be forced to affirm that this is the Christ indeed. That's why he told them, go and show yourself to them so that they can affirm and confirm that this is the Christ. And you know the story. As they were going, it says they were cleansed. And as you are going in the name of the Lord, you are totally cleansed in Jesus' name. Let's look at Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, we're reading from verse 2. And now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he said to of his disciples, look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, And he said unto him, Are thou he that shall come? or do we look for another then in verse 4 in verse 4 Jesus answered and said unto them go show John again those things which the, which ye which ye do here and see are you the Christ are you the one that is to come or do we look for another okay go and tell John this when you tell John this he will know this is the one to come is the evidence that this is Christ look at verse 5 in verse 5 the blind receive their sight it did not happen in the Old Testament. Something happening in the ministry of Christ that had not happened in the Old Testament and the lame work that had not been happening and the lepers are cleansed. When you tell John that, he will know that this is the evidence of the one higher than the priest who only could examine them and you know shut them up and shut them out but in the case of this one that you are asking the lepers are cleansed and the dead and the deaf hear and the dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preach unto them and then he tells us there in verse 8 and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me it's the higher ministry of Christ cleansing the lepers not casting out the lepers look at number two here number two our mandate of cleansing not just counseling the lepers now we have a higher ministry than that of the old testament priests and prophets because now we have a mandate in matthew chapter 10 reading from verse 1 and when he he had called unto him his twelve disciples. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. They were casting out evil spirits from the men. They were not casting the men out of the fellowship. 
They were casting out the evil spirit, whatever the people have, and whatever they manifest that make them unqualified to be in the midst of the righteous, cast those things out of them, not them being cast out, and cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, and as she go preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Look at the mandate, verse 8. In verse 8, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. That's the mandate cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out the devils freely, ye have received and freely give. Amen. Amen. Look at number three. Number three, we're looking at the mastery in uh, consecration and conformity to the Lord. The, the, the consecration we ought to have and the commitment and conformity to the Lord we ought to have. Romans chapter 8, we're looking at verse 29. In Romans chapter 8, we're looking at verse uh, 29. It says in verse 29, for whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of of his son to be conformed the character of Christ the ministry of Christ the anointing of Christ the power of Christ that we will receive and then will be conformed to the image of God's only begotten son that he might be the firstborn among many witnesses. May the Lord qualify every one of us in Jesus' name. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 5 there. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5, and if a man also strive for mastery, in the plural, we look at our lives in preaching where striving for mastery in uh, disseminating, giving up the word of God while looking for mastery, in healing the sick and cleansing the lepers and doing everything the Lord has called us to do while looking for mastery in our composure, in our maturity, in our lives. We're aiming at victory. We want to be conformed to the image of Christ and be fully consecrated. And it says, if a man strive for masteries, Yet you see not crowd except a stride lawfully. Want to go to the Lord and say, Lord, we've heard. We don't want to remain at the level of the Old Testament priest. We want to come up. You are coming up. And our ministry will be increased. Your ministry will be increased. And then you'll be able to stand higher than you did yesterday. Higher than you did last week. Higher than you did even last year. May the grace of God increase in your life. The power of the Lord increase in your life. The anointing of the Holy Ghost increase in your life. That you will do what you are not able to do previously. And the Lord will be with you and will never leave you. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer.